Before the reading begins, if you would like early access, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Hot and Fresh in the Kitchen, written by Some Leech, sequel to Hybrid Vigor. Anon's eyes fluttered open as he felt movement behind him. Lying on his side below the sheets on his bed as something warm rested against his back. Glancing over his shoulder, he spied a curly amber mane with a mahogany-colored horn protruding from it. A few weeks ago, the sight would have left him confused beyond belief. But now, it only brought a smile to his face. He watched as the form shifted a pair of golden eyes, sleepily looking back at him. Hmm. Morning, hot stuff. He sighed. Morning, my little stud muffin. Autumn Blaze cooed, contentedly wiggling against his back. Just about a week ago, while tending to the castle of friendship, Twilight Sparkle had appeared with a very curious guest. Now having spent several months in Equestria, Anon had seen all manner of pony folks, as well as a number of other sapient creatures, yet he'd never encountered anything like this particular being. Roughly in the size of a pony, she had several rather distinct features. A bushy mane hung around her neck, and a tuft of rut sat on the tip of her tail. Her coat was a creamy color, although her back and the top of her muzzle were covered by a green scale-like hide. While she did have a horn and was capable of using magic, it resembled a forked branch with a pair of crimson rings around its base. Lastly, her hooves, unlike other equines, were cloven. In short, she definitely stood out. Apparently, her species had secluded themselves in the mountains for generations, and they'd only just been rediscovered. Twilight, being the princess of friendship and general science nerd, had volunteered to show Autumn around Ponyville, introducing her to some of the townsfolk before bringing her to the castle. Of course, Anon had no way of knowing the two would appear, nor that the Alicorn had a devilish experiment planned for the two. Shortly after being introduced, Anon had found himself increasingly aroused by her presence. To the point of being in a nearly euphoric state, sure, he'd had a lustful thought or two about ponies before, but he'd never had a reaction that strong to a mare. One thing had led to another, and, well, he'd ended up plowing her on the cutie map. Worse than that, he'd apparently knocked her up in the process. Yes, unfortunately, the man had been used as a guinea pig to test the mating habits and genetic compatibility of Kieran mares, and while it had initially been off-putting, having been tricked into impregnating an admittedly adorable quadruped, Anon slowly grew to accept the idea. Not only because Twilight had profusely apologized for tricking him, but because he hit it off with Autumn damn near immediately. She was energetic, astoundingly cheerful, and just downright pleasant to speak with. Beyond having been captivated by the pheromones she'd been exuding during the height of her heat, there was just something remarkably charming about her. As sappy as it sounded, and although he'd feared it was true, Anon found himself falling for her. Anon and Autumn held each other's gaze for a moment before the man rolled over to face her. She shuffled back slightly, allowing him room to maneuver. After he had adjusted, he reached out to gently run his fingers through her amber, wool-like mane. Closing her eyes, she rested her cheek on his forearm. See? Autumn stifled a yawn. I told you I don't snore. I was more worried about waking up in some sex-crazed stupor. And quipped. Hey, no fair. Autumn shot him a wounded look. I told you the musk stops after we've been bred. Speaking of bread, you want some toast or something? He asked, running his fingers under her chin. She looked up at him, his heart skipped to be by all the stars above. The way the light played off those eyes of hers, poems and songs were written about sights like this. Unfortunately, the beauty of the moment was shattered as soon as she opened her mouth. Look at you, my little human baker. First you put a bun in my oven, now you're gonna make me bread. Hey, 
I didn't say I'd make the bread, but I'd get some toast for you. Annan chuckled, rolling his eyes. Her sharp wit was, as always, on point. Besides, I'd consider myself more of a pastry chef. He countered, thoughtfully rubbing his chin. And why is that? She queried, steadily wriggling closer until her chest was pressed against his. Because I'm pretty good at making cream pies. And in replied, waggling his eyebrows at her. His efforts at levity were rewarded with a hoof affectionately slapping his cheek. Autumn shook her head, fighting back a laugh, attempting to look put off as she lay her head against his collar. What am I to do with you? Annan shrugged and tussled her hair. Hell if I know hot stuff, but I'm gonna go get us some grub. He grumbled, realizing he couldn't spoon with the small dragon horse all day. Gently setting her head on the pillow, he swung his legs over the side of the bed. With a groan, he got to his feet before shuffling towards the dresser. As comfortable as he was wearing boxers, he couldn't go traipsing around the castle in his underwear. Wait, Autumn called, drawing his attention as he looked over an eyebrow cocked in confusion. She slowly spun a hoof in a little circle. Give me a little turn. Rolling his eyes, Anon's shoulders slumped. It's not like the request really bothered him or anything, and most guys would kill for a girl who was as unbashedly forward as Autumn. So he obliged, placing one hand on his hip and the other on his head. He inelegantly wheeled around. As he finished his revolution, he gave her a small bow. Any other requests? He inquired, noting the satisfied look in her eyes. Until we get Twilight to install a pole in here, that'll do. Autumn tittered, easing herself from the bed. Decided to come with, eh? And encountered, hearing the sound of hooves and polished marble as he pulled a t-shirt over his head. Sure, let's go with that. It's totally not because I wouldn't mind having more than toast for breakfast. Autumn casually noted. Trotting past him, she nonchalantly reached up and smacked his rear before he could get his pants pulled up. Anon grinned, spying her rump saunter by, taking a moment to appreciate the view, his gaze wandering from her furry little fetlocks up to the twin globes of her tush. He smiled. Better watch it. If you eat like you've been doing, you're gonna thicken up something fierce, he chuckled. Autumn stopped dead in her tracks, and one ear twitched slightly upon hearing his words. Honey, let's not forget I'm eating for two now. She sighed, peering over her shoulder at him. Yeah, true, but... He sighed, reached down and gave one glorious ass cheek a squeeze as he strode past. It's not like I complained about it, did I? Taking an additional step past her, he knelt down to tie his shoes. Oh no... So, you like a mare with a little meat on her, huh? She cooed, strolling around to face him. Absolutely. Annan looked up and gave a face a few inches from a sly grin. And Mills, of course. Her expression fell to confusion as she cocked her head. Milfs? Mothers, I'd like to fuck. He explained, punctuating each word by bringing his face closer to hers. As strange as it may sound, the two had fallen into this sort of behavior rather quickly. The banter between them was almost constant, with each verbally poking at each other, both in and out of the bedroom. Well, this hot mama is hankering for some grub, so get a move on. Autumn snickered, pulling herself away. The last time they'd had a morning start like this, they'd quickly found themselves running on the floor. It was fun and all, but it made for an awkward morning meal, mostly because the castle's crystalline hallways' tendency to echo the sounds of climactic shouting and dirty talk. It didn't bother either of them, of course, and Twilight never complained about it, but it did seem to make Spike somewhat uncomfortable. All right, all right, hold your horses and grumbled, taking off after her. Winding their way through the labyrinthine hallways of the Friendship Fortress, the two quickly found their way downstairs into the kitchen. As they drew nearer, the smell of confections assailed their nostrils, causing each of them to move faster. It wasn't uncommon for Spike to prepare breakfast for everyone, and it was often a guessing game of exactly what he'd whipped up. 
Oh, that's definitely waffles and blueberry syrup, Autumn said, her mouth beginning to water. No, I'm thinking muffins. And he guessed his stomach beginning to grumble. Whatever it was, it smelled damn good. And the scent of blueberries was unmistakable. You want to bet? The Kieran jeered, glancing over at him. It's on hot stuff. And in responded, overtaking her as they reached the doorway to the kitchen. Walking inside, he found a table set with four places set. A steaming tray of waffles lie in the centerpiece, alongside a bowl of fruit, whipped cream, and a gravy boat full of freshly made blueberry syrup. Damn it, he groaned. What's that? I was right again. Autumn tittered, making a beeline for her seat. Geez, Anon, I might need to trade you in for a new one. Yeah, good luck finding another human. Anon groused, moving towards his chair. As he got closer, he noticed a folded letter on his seat. Opening it and drawing Autumn's attention, he read the note aloud. Dear Anon and Autumn, Spike and I had to run to the school, since Starlight and Trixie are putting on a show for the students. The performance doesn't start until noon, so feel free to come by. Before we left, Spike made some breakfast for you. Judging from when you two normally wake up, it should still be warm by the time you get downstairs. Anyways, I'll see you soon. Twilight and Spike. Well, that was nice. Hey! And it blurted. Somewhere during his narration, Autumn had begun digging into a waffle. She paused bite of her meal hovering just above her snout as she looked at him. What? I'm hungry. She complained, popping the morsel into her maw. Could have at least waited for me to finish. And in quietly gripe, plopping down into his seat beside her, forking himself a waffle and moving it to his plate, he drenched the confection in syrup. But before he could slice off a bit, he found a piece levitating before him. Sorry, I should have waited. Autumn mumbled, looking slightly crestfallen. Nah, don't worry about it. And on side, biting down on the proffered slice of waffle. Beyond being an adorable, slightly impulsive chatterbox, Autumn had warmed to him rather quickly. She'd often wait for him, offer to clean up around the castle, and even occasionally given him massages. He couldn't be sure if it was because of her initial meeting and subsequent siring of her unborn child but she genuinely seemed to be developing a fondness for him, and the feeling was mutual. You okay? Autumn asked, snapping it on from his thoughts. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. He replied, having swallowed a, his bite. Apparently, his response wasn't settling well with her. Judging from the way her ears pulled back, he frowned, giving her his full attention. Before he could say anything, he was hit with another question. You're not really mad, are you? She pressed her voice to almost a whisper. Babe, he breathed, reaching out and stroking her cheek. Of course not, it's just breakfast. A fleeting, half-hearted smile played across her face before disappearing. I just don't want to lose you. The statement came totally out of left field and left Anon speechless. He couldn't tell if it was a shift in hormones, some underlying issues that only now presented itself, or something else entirely. Regardless, with his appetite gone, he simply stared at her. Why in the hell would I do that? Because that's what always happens with us. With Kieran. We find a mate, get all pregnant and stuff, and then they just leave. While Anon had heard about their reclusive mating habits, he'd had no idea this was a concern of Autumn's. Sure, he'd unwittingly found himself balls deep in her less than an hour after having met her, but he wasn't mad about it. The truth was that he'd actually grown quite fond of her. She brought a smile to his face, even if she was a handful at times, which was more than most people or ponies could do. Not to mention, he would never run out on a kid, expected or not. Hey. He began turning her face towards himself. You stop that right now, Missy. I'm not going anywhere, and it's not just because I'm stuck in magical horseland. As she went to open her mouth, he pressed his fingers to her lips. I wasn't finished. Even if I could go back to where I'm from, I wouldn't. Do you know why? He let the question hang, moving his hand away from her snout. Why? She whispered, looking up at him. Because I ain't the type of guy who'd abandon a family. 
he whispered, leaning in and giving her a kiss on the nose. As batshit crazy as it sounded, he actually enjoyed living in Equestria. The ponies were all pleasant, there was virtually no drama, and he genuinely started developing feelings for Autumn, even without a child on the way. He didn't want to lose the life he'd started building for himself, and while he had no way of knowing what the future would hold for him or his unborn kid, it couldn't be worse than the home he'd left. So, you're gonna stay with me for our kid? And you, of course. I mean, how many guys are lucky enough to have a Kirin for a lover? Well, to be fair, you could always go to the Peaks of Peril, form a harem and live like a king. She countered, ruefully rubbing her chin. Oh, please. I could barely handle one of you. Besides, he said abruptly getting to his feet and scooping up in her arms. Why would I want to trade in the best Kieran there is? Best Kieran MILF in training. Autumn corrected, fighting back a snicker as she pressed her cheek to his chest. But seriously, thanks. Twilight said you were a good guy, but that was an understatement. So you're not going to run on me either? Just leave me high and dry or anything? He softly inquired, gazing down at her. And let some other mare end up with you? Nah, you're a keeper, even if your nipples are in a weird spot. She teased, tweaking one through his shirt. At least mine aren't above my junk, Annan retorted, wriggling his hand around the cup of her teats. Not that I hear any complaints about it. Autumn giggled, wiggling in his arms. True. They are conveniently placed for motorboating, he said, thinking aloud. Motor wedding? This, and in flatly stated, without warning, he hafted her up, leaving her groin at eye level before burying his face in her perky bosoms. Autumn yelped in surprise as he blew a raspberry betwixt her breast. Anon, in the kitchen? What if someone sees us? She asked, feigning shock. The warmth of his breath upon her supple mounds of flesh and sensitive areola caused a shiver to run up her spine. Lowering her back down, Anon shrugged off her concern. I could do worse. Oh ho, could you now? Autumn countered a sultry tone entering her voice. Whether or not Anon noticed her gaze wandering down his chest, he persisted. Of course I could. I could always ravish you. Right here on the table. He laughed, woefully unaware of Autumn's amorous intent. Prove it. She cooed, dragging her muzzle over his pectoral. I... What? And it blurted, caught off guard by her salacious request, writhing. In his grasp, he set her down in a chair, only for her to hop onto the table's surface. With her head reaching his midriff, she prodded at his crotch. I gotta say... For someone with such a nice cock. Autumn peered up at him. I didn't know the rest of you was so chicken. Listen, I'm sure... Anon trailed off, observing her magically clear the plates from the table. What are you doing? Oh, just tidying up a bit. She nonchalantly commented, levitating the flatware, silverware, and waffles towards the sink. Hey, I wasn't done eating. He protested, reaching for his hoovering plate of waffles. Unfortunately, it evaded him, dancing just out of his grasp. Frustratedly, he looked back towards Autumn and his jaw nearly hit the floor. Now, lying on her back with her hind legs in the air, Autumn hungrily stared back at him. Don't worry, I've got your breakfast right here. She purred, lust dripping from every word. As Anon watched, her thighs parted, revealing the succulent and meaty entrance between them. Rosy and engorged, her plump lower lips glistened in the morning light. Entranced by the sight, he gulped as her mare had winked at him. The move gave him a tantalizing glimpse of her interior, moist and inviting, and signaled that she definitely meant business. Sensing his loins begin to stir, he moved towards her. Stepping to the side of the table, he peered down at her before reaching out to grab one of her fetlocks in each hand. While the display was appreciated and painfully arousing, she wasn't in the best position for any sort of lewd act. Gently, he pulled her closer while leaning over and bringing his face to hers. What am I going to do with you? Well, after you fuck me silly, you can take me to that show Twilight mentioned. Autumn replied, smiling warmly at him. 
As she finished, he brought his lips to hers, kissing her deeply. He cradled her head as their tongues wrestled for one another. With his fingers in her mane, Anon pulled away, before kissing his way down her neck, over her chest and towards her abdomen. As he reached her belly, he felt a hoof pushing his head lower, urging him to speed up. He discovered that, amongst other things, Autumn really enjoyed oral, which conveniently for him was a service he thoroughly enjoyed administering. Passing her bosom and briefly giving one nipple a playful nibble, he reached his destination. Now face to Merhood with his lover, Anon knelt to the floor, moving his head between her hind legs. The warmth of her nethers washed over his countenance. He couldn't say if all Kirin Maris had such high body temperatures, but holy hell, Autumn was one toasty little marshmallow horse, especially when she was worked up. After taking a moment to appreciate the sight, he dragged his tongue up her snatch until he reached her clit. Autumn groaned, feeling his tongue dance and swirl around the sensitive butt of flesh. Right there, she wheezed, sorcerously pressing his face into her groin. As an on licked and suckled upon her clit, one hand slunk around her thigh into her lower abdomen. Bestial implications aside, he'd slowly been developing a fondness for Mare's bosom placement. Soon enough, his fingers crept over the small mound of flesh, but that just meant he was close to his target. Feeling around, blinded by Autumn's muff, he eventually found it, gingerly pinching her nipples between his thumb and index finger. He gave it a squeeze. Bet you can't <clears throat> wait until they're leaking everywhere, can you? Autumn moaned, gyrating on his countenance. While it would be a few months, eventually they would swell with milk. The notion of Autumn, heavy with full, caused Anon to pause. Pulling his face away, he peered up at her. That's gonna be so fucking hot, he muttered, licking her flavor from his lips. Apparently, he had a fetish for pregnant chicks, or, well, mares, anyways. After his comment, he dove back in, eagerly lapping at her winking marehood. Her flavor is like an exotic citrus fruit, tangy and mildly sweet. Upon his tongue, squatted down, eating out the exotic equine, Anon's erection throbbed within his pants. Trapped within his pants, it struggled against the fabric. The sensation was gradually becoming increasingly uncomfortable, causing him to fidget slightly. Not that he minded eating her out or anything, but he was only so patient. Pushing herself up slightly, she placed one hoof on the top of his head before pressing him into her crotch. It was quite a sight. Lying there, with her lover feasting upon her nethers, she sighed contentedly, though she wouldn't stay that way for long. Oral was all well and good, serving as a worthy appetizer, but it was just that. As Anon's face appeared again, likely for a breather, his countenance smeared with nectar, she realized she'd had enough. Fuck me, she lewdly growled, magically hauling his collar upward. Anon didn't need to be told twice. Bolting to his feet, he fumbled with the buckle on his belt, while Autumn sorcerously hauled up his shirt over his head. Between the two of them, the man was damn near fully stripped within seconds. Kicking his trousers off, he stepped between Autumn's legs, which were invitingly spread for him. Grabbing the base of his stool, he ran his hand up and down her cunt. You want it? He teased, giving her entrance the occasional prod. She remained silent, but she nodded a bit, her lip. Slowly, he brought his hips forward, allowing him to leisurely sink himself into her. Autumn laid back, closing her eyes and enjoying the sensation. The feeling was, as always, incredible. The delicate curve of his length, the veins along his shaft and the rounded tip, they were all just perfect. Eventually, after what felt like an eternity, she felt him bump against her womb. Maybe it was fate or perhaps circumstance, but Anon almost perfectly sized her for her. Not too small, not too big, just right. Having bottomed out and now leaning over his mate, Anon gave them each a moment to adjust. Her interior was blazingly hot, almost like a furnace, but not unbearably so. Taking a breath, he felt her clamp around his length. It was her way of telling him to start, a giddy up of sorts. Pulling out a few inches of his rod before plunging it back inside, he started to rut her in earnest. 
Peering up, Autumn couldn't help but appreciate the sight. Anon's chest over her with his arms on either side as he thrust into her. He was remarkably attractive for a strange walking monkey creature. Still, he'd proven himself to be quite the kind-hearted man, he was more than a capable lover, and he was painfully entertaining. In short, she was quite pleased with her mate. Harder, she rasped, warming up. While appreciated, wasn't nearly as thrilling as a full-on breeding session. The force and speed of Anon's plunged increased as he sought to oblige his lover. Over the last week, they'd done it in a number of positions, although Missionary was one of his favorites. It allowed the best view of her face, and it was to let him really hammer her G-spot. Supporting himself on one arm, he slipped a hand under her head, drawing her attention. Looking up, Autumn met his gaze. Despite herself, she blushed. For some reason, there was something about the way he looked at her that really got her going. Despite all the grab-ass double entendres and flirting in the simple manner, that he peered into her eyes made her weak in the knees. As she opened her mouth to ask him to stop, he leaned down towards her, and without a word he pulled her head up and met her with a kiss, his hips continuing to buck away causing his nuts to slap against her tush, their bodies intertwined. Autumn pushed back, her tongue warring with his as they Frenched. That was until she remembered something. Tearing her face away, she cautiously glanced at him. Your pill? She heatedly asked. He nodded, before she began kissing him again. The fires of passion within her, well stoked, and only growing stronger by the minute. The last thing she wanted was for... Anon noticed a crimson ember drift from her mane, and he was immediately reminded to thank Twilight again for his medication. Since meeting Autumn, he'd been taking anti-conflagration tablets, concorded by the princess to prevent any mid-coitus cremation. It was a good thing too, since Autumn had a nasty habit of detonating like a napalm charge upon climaxing. Honestly, he found it pretty hot, pun intended. With his fingers in her mane, Autumn moaned into Anon's mouth. Wrapping her hind legs around him, she pulled him closer. Her tail lashed out, wrapping around his side to caress his lower back, clenching and relaxing her marrowhood. She synchronized herself with his movements, maximizing her pleasure while allowing him to delve in her with ease. Feeling her clamp down on the back strokes while easing up on the thrust was astounding. Apparently, most mares had some unholy control over their vaginal canals, a trait human women could never hope to challenge, and yet another strong selling point for dating a quadruped. As he plowed her, his plunges became more aggressive, his movements hastened, yet he endured, forcing herself to break the kiss. Autumn pressed her face into his neck. Don't stop, she whimpered. It wasn't that she wanted to stop making out with him, she just didn't want him to get hurt. Sparks and cinders drifted about the air, while azure and violet flames engulfed her mane. Her creamy coat darkened, disappearing entirely beneath the onyx hide of her emerging neuric form. Within her maw, her canines elongated substantially, leaving her with a pair of sharp, imposing fangs. Lastly, the pupils of her eyes faded away, replaced by the white nothingness of her altered state. While Anon was aware of the transformation, the inferno around him was but a comforting warmth, his medication, as always, protecting him from Autumn's emotional outbursts, so save for his clothing, he was spared. His pants and shorts kicked some distance away would likely survive the combustion, but sadly, his shirt was not spared. Wrapping his arms around his torso, he held her tightly, and fought to hold Fron for just a bit longer. Although release was but a hair's breadth away, he was hoping he'd outlast his lover. Pumping away with his thrust devolving into a flurry of frantic movements, he was granted his wish. With a primal roar, Autumn came, prismatic fire of blues, reds, and purples burst forth from her frame, erupting in a column of pyrotechnic fury. The display mirrored her raw and bridled orgasmic bliss, her marehood angrily seized upon Annan's member as it gushed and spurted her streaming nectar to the floor in a fit of peak. She clamped her jaws down on Annan's shoulder to dramatic effect. Feeling Autumn's fangs sink into his flesh, Anon immediately reached his limit, slamming his hips forward and fully entombing his member inside Autumn's canal he came. A torrent of seed rocketed from his balls down his length 
and ultimately came crashing down upon his paramour's cervix. Shot after shot, rope after rope was deposited within her, painting her insides white before overflowing her cunt and dripping free. Locked together, holding one another, they remained still, save for the periodic thrust of twitching limb. Neither spoke as they rode out their orgasmic bliss. Whilst the moments passed, the flames about them slowly subsided, leaving them in a post-coitus stupor. Their chests heaved, hauling breath into themselves as they steadily regained composure. Feeling something warm and slick on her lips, as well as having the taste of copper in her mouth, Autumn looked down, a thin trail of blood wept from Manon's shoulder, from where she'd bitten him. In a panic, she pulled away from her neuric form, disappearing instantaneously. Oh my gosh, honey, I'm so, so sorry. She bleated, levitating a damp dishcloth over. Glancing over, Anon hadn't even realized she'd drawn blood, so he wasn't overly concerned. Waving away her worry, he kissed her snout. Don't worry about it. Tis but a flesh wound, he joked. Honestly, a dash of pain mingled with the overpowering sensations of pleasure had actually escalated his climax to a new height. Well, we should... Autumn squeaked as they both went crashing through the charred table. Apparently, the conflagration had weakened the furniture to the point of failure. Thankfully, they didn't fall far and anon bore the brunt of the tumble. Looking around, the man grimaced. Ah, oh, god damn it. He shouted, hopping to his feet. A sizable portion of the kitchen was in ruins, with bits of charred debris strewn about. Autumn, get the hose. He yelled, using the dish rag to snuff out small flames on the floor. On it, she replied, acting quickly. She dashed to the sink, where the magically redirected water from the tap to douse the smoking remnants of their debauchery. Within minutes, the two had the situation well at hand, and that the fires had been dealt with. There was still a substantial mess, as well as the utter loss of the kitchen table, but it could have been worse. With the crisis dealt with, Anon rested against the divider, while Autumn trotted over towards him. Note to self. Have twilight fire retard the entire castle. She mused, tapping her chin. Note to self, don't bang my wife on combustible furniture. Anon chuckled as he looked over at the little Kira and his smile faltered. She was staring squarely at him with an unreadable expression. You, uh, okay? Wife? She parroted, taking a step closer. Well... Anon trailed off, realizing he let the word slip. It's not like he'd given it much thought or anything. He just happened to say it. He had, after all, ended up pumping a kid into her. Not that she'd minded or anything. We'll see about that one, stud. She responded after giving herself a moment. You want anything to drink? Maybe some Kirin beer? She asked, turning towards the fridge. Kir Kirin what? He countered, somewhat confused. Nothing. Just a silly inside joke, fetching them a bottle of water. She laughed, trotting back to him, surveying the damage. You think we can clean this up before Trixie's show? Anon nodded, taking a gulp of his drink. Yeah, shouldn't be too bad. One of the benefits of living in a giant crystal castle, scorch marks seem to wipe right off. You want to magic the bigger stuff out of the window while I sweep and mop? He continued looking down at her. Sounds like the plan. After we're done, we can shower and head out. Oh, and I'll buy you something to eat, since I did incinerate your breakfast. She noted, floating the table's remnants from the floor. Into dad bods, huh? And joked, retrieving a mop from the broom closet. Nah, I just need you to keep up your strength. After all, I can be quite a hoofful. She countered, shooting him a wink. Anon smiled, although he still wondered how everything was going to play out between them. He had a feeling that as long as they were together, everything was going to be all right. Well then, I hope you guys have had a wunderbar day. Peace off.